Grey clouds divide across the horizon as the helicopter beats into the damp sky. All around Burke in far western New South Wales, the wide brown land has become a wide brown sea. And in that great expanse of water, washed down from Queensland, the sky's image is perfectly reflected on the plain. It's one of Australia's bizarre beauties that so much of her eastern landmass drains not east to the ocean, but south towards Adelaide, down the Murray-Darling River system, the 18th longest in the world. As the second driest continent, we truly are a country of extremes. For the first decade of this century, Burke was plagued by drought. Crops failed, stock died, farmers gave up, and so did the local businesses that relied on them. Now, after two seasons of La Nina rains, the ruddy earth is newly dressed in verdant hues. As I write, the equivalent of two Olympic-sized swimming pools of water is flowing past Burke every second. At that rate, the total flow for the eight consecutive years from 2002 to 2009 could be accumulated in just 15 days. At ground level, trees are swamped canopy deep and the water is already close to the historic Burke Bridge opened in 1883 and known since as the gateway to the Never Never. From above, the water has a revealing quality, not uniform, but searching out low points in the landscape. The river's central channel is marked by a strong spine of trees, while all around its lazy corpus spreads out. At its margins, broad brush fingers explore paddocks and clasp levee-protected farmyards. Everything is in rude health. New coats of green and blue dress once parched plains, with only the odd scar exposing their red heart beneath. Even older locals say they've never seen the country look this good. And with dams full and soil wet, there are several years of good crops to look forward to. But in the meantime, the water is inconvenient, messy and dangerous. With thousands of people still isolated, the emergency service is using helicopters and flood boats to check on residents and resupply stock and properties. Locals are staunch, calling even these near record levels a nuisance flood and claiming others are doing it harder still. But even after the water goes down, there'll be months of hard work plagued by sandflies and mosquitoes. Nevertheless, swooping over riven roads and drenched paddocks, it's impossible not to imagine what comes next. Green fields yellowing under blue summer skies and hint of red returning. Australia truly is a landscape of primary colours.